How would you take these wires and pass them through these wires without any of them messing with each other? How would you send this signal strength upwards without it taking forever? After years of wiring redstone, I've run into so many of these questions. But now, I've got a solution for every scenario. So in this video, I'm going to show you all of these solutions and a bunch of tips and tricks along the way. That way you'll spend less time on wiring and more time on the more exciting parts of your build. I hope you enjoy. Starting as simple as possible, let's say you just want to wire a binary signal from point A to point B. If both points are flat on the ground, then this is really easy. You can just use a line of dust with a repeater every 15 blocks. If you want to get a little more length out of it, you can also put a block behind and in front of the repeater. Literally the only issue you might run into with this circuit is when it comes to turning. Sometimes if the signal strength runs out here, the dust isn't pointing into the block anymore. In this case though, you can just put a target block here and problem solved. But of course, having both points flat on the ground is pretty rare, so let's look at some other directions. If you're sending something upwards, the most common solution is to use glass towers because they're really small and fast. When they eventually run out of signal strength, there are a few ways to keep it going. You can use a repeater and kind of flip it back around like this, or you can use two torches, which acts like a repeater because it's a double negation. And speaking of negation, if your tower is really high, you don't necessarily have to make a double negation every time. In this tower, for example, I just have one negation here and another one here. In total, it's a double negation, so it still works, and it's faster than using two torches at every step. Now let's go the other way downwards. If you play on Bedrock Edition, then the best solution for downwards is also glass towers. But unfortunately, in Java Edition, glass towers only send redstone upwards. So to go down, you have to use some kind of staircase. A clean way to make a staircase is to make it into a spiral, like this. This will send redstone down really fast. And if you run out of signal strength, you can use the exact same strategies as the upward towers. You can use a repeater, a double negation with torches, or a bunch of single negations as long as there's an even number. Also, don't forget that spirals can send things up too. So if you ever need to send something up and down on the same wire, spirals are the best way to do that. The last scenario for point A to point B is when it's diagonal. When you have a situation like this, remember that you can always do it in two parts, horizontal and then vertical, or even vertical and then horizontal. And there's no shame in this. In fact, it's usually a really clean way to do it. But of course, there are more efficient ways to get there. If you're going up on a diagonal, then the easiest solution is to just make a staircase and put a repeater when you run out of signal strength. This does make it a little bit ugly because now the next diagonal is shifted over by one block. So sometimes what I'll do is I'll put torches on the sides of the blocks. This allows you to do a double negation or even a single negation without shifting the blocks over. And then if you're going down on a diagonal, there's really only one solution you'll ever need. All you have to do is put a repeater into a block and it'll carry it down nice and easy without shifting the line. Next, let's talk about how to wire multiple signals at once. In general, people like to send multiple signals in two main ways, stacking the wires horizontally or vertically. When redstone first came out, horizontal was more popular because it looked more like a real circuit. But as time went on, people found some nice advantages of making them vertical. For example, it's easier to turn the wires. Instead of every wire having a different length, vertical wires turn in sync. But I'm gonna cover both of these techniques because both kinds of wiring still come up a ton. Now, in both of these cases, the wires are stacked every two blocks, which is usually small enough for whatever you're building. But if you really need to squeeze them together, you can stagger them one block apart from each other like this. This works in the exact same way. If you input the second lamp, then the second output turns on. And you can still turn it, which is pretty cool. Going upwards, there's not really any fancy tricks. The best you can do is make a glass tower for each wire and stack them next to each other. Here I have two examples of that, one using repeaters and one using torches. Once again, if you really need to squeeze them together, you can stagger them like this. Just make sure that the extensions don't mess with the towers around them. Going downwards, just like before, spirals are probably the best way to go. When putting a bunch of spirals next to each other, I've seen a lot of people do it like this, where each tower has one block of space in between. But there actually is a way to put them right next to each other. You just have to alternate between a clockwise spiral and a counterclockwise spiral. So that's pretty cool. Going diagonal, this is where things start to get interesting. If you have horizontal wires, then you can just use the same strategies as before, stack next to each other. And if you want them to be closer, you can stagger them like this, with every other wire being two blocks lower than the rest. If you have vertical wires, one common solution is to alternate between glass and regular blocks, which allows all the signals to go up independently and diagonally. However, this strategy only goes one block up for every two blocks across, which is kind of annoying. So to solve 
solve this, you can just stagger them again. By having half the wires one block over, they can all go up on a regular diagonal. Or another way to solve it is like this. If you make it exactly 15 blocks long and the whole thing is glass, then you actually don't need to stagger them. This works because only the wire you turned on has enough strength to get to the repeater. And when you're going down a diagonal, everything I've said here works in reverse. Well, except for that last trick. Unfortunately, there's no way to do this when going down. You'll have to either do this or stagger them. It's also worth mentioning how to convert between horizontal and vertical wiring. There are lots of ways to do this, but my favorite way is with glass towers. When going from horizontal to vertical, you can use a glass tower for each wire getting taller and taller. And then for vertical to horizontal, it's really similar. This is probably the cleanest way to convert between the two. Although, one problem you might have is that the leftmost bit goes to the bottom and the rightmost bit goes to the top. Sometimes, you actually want that to be the reverse. In that case, you have two options. You can make it with spirals instead, going down, or you can just go to the right instead of left. Both of these options will basically flip the output. Finally, let's talk about wiring hex, or signal strength values. One tip I always tell people when wiring hex is to ask yourself, do I really need to wire hex? I mean, the conversion from hex to binary and binary to hex is really fast, just two or three ticks on most designs. So if it's a long distance, you should see if it's better to convert to binary first and then back to hex at the end. That'll make it way faster in a lot of cases. But once you're sure that you need to wire hex, here are some of the best solutions. Starting with flat ground, the most straightforward approach is to use a chain of comparators, but this is very slow. The faster way to do it is with something like this. This circuit uses the property that a signal strength x will travel for x blocks. Right now, I put in a 5, so the fifth repeater is the last one to turn on. And since there are 15 repeaters in this row, it'll decrease for 10 more blocks, which puts it back to 5. So no matter what strength you put in here, it comes out on the other side very quickly. Now, in this version of the circuit, it's 15 repeaters long, but it doesn't have to be. If you want to shorten it, it's really easy. You just have to subtract from the total the number of blocks shorter it is. For example, this one is 4 blocks shorter, so I just need to subtract a 4 on the end. And as you can see, if I put in a 5, I still get a 5. Now, if I'm being honest, all of the remaining hex solutions are basically just variations on this circuit. They all follow the exact same pattern. A dust line, a bunch of repeaters, and another dust line. The one going upwards has a glass tower, a bunch of repeaters, and another glass tower. So of course, if you put in a 7, you'll get a 7 at the top. The one going down definitely looks like it might be different, but I assure you, it's the exact same circuit. This spiral right here is the first dust line, then there's a bunch of repeaters, and this spiral is the second dust line. Then for diagonal, you can just take the circuit and staircase it like this. This one right here is 3 blocks wide, but there's also a version that's only 2 blocks wide. And that goes for the downward diagonal as well. There's a 3 wide version, and a 2 wide. The only other major scenario that you'll probably run into a lot is crossing wires through each other. For example, let's say you have two wires, one going this way and one going this way, and you don't want them to interfere with each other. In this case, the solution is really simple. Just put one wire over the other one. But when you have two multi-bit signals trying to cross, things can get a little more complicated. Luckily though, there's an easy solution. All you have to do is use an intersection like this, which uses repeaters to make sure that they don't interfere with each other. And this type of intersection is stackable every two blocks, so you can use it to cross two sets of vertical wires. Personally, I think this is the most elegant solution, but I should probably mention that there's another way to do it without using repeaters at all. By using 3D space and a lot of staggering, you can actually make a zero tick crossover. I've never used this because it's kind of messy, but if you really need that extra speed, it's a good option. Okay, so that covers most of the scenarios you'll hit when building redstone. But there's still a big question that I haven't really answered. What's the best way to build these? Well, first and foremost, don't build them by hand. I highly recommend getting a mod called World Edit, which allows you to edit the world using in-game commands. I also recommend getting a mod called Redstone Tools, which I'm the owner of. Redstone Tools gives you even more commands and even lets you set custom macros to fit your style. Me personally, I have three macros set up two for moving things back and forth, and one for stacking. Unfortunately, there's not enough time for me to show you how I would build every circuit here, but let's go through a few examples. First, let's say I wanted to make eight horizontal wires. I'd probably start with just three dust and stack it four times. Then I'd put a repeater on the end and stack it a bunch of times this way. Then I'd select the whole thing and stack it seven times. Next, let's say I wanted to make eight glass towers. I'd start with two glass, put redstone on top of them, 
and then run slash slash r stack 30 up 2. You can use regular stack for this, but sometimes this makes the redstone disappear because it doesn't have glass under it as it stacks. Then I'd power it from the bottom to see where it runs out of signal strength. It's right here, so I would build two torches. Then I would select the two torches and run slash slash r stack 2 up 16. This puts torches every 16 blocks, allowing the signal to reach the top. Then I'd select the whole tower and stack it seven times. And finally, let's say I wanted to make eight vertical wires go down diagonally. I'd probably start with the bottom wire. I'd build a block, glass, block, glass, then copy that and paste it, and copy and paste it one more time. Then I'd put repeaters on the end, since it's exactly 16 blocks long, and copy and paste this for as long as I need. Then I'd select the whole wire and run slash slash r stack 7 up 2. I hope this video was helpful to you in one way or another. The world download is in the description if you'd like to check out any of the circuits. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe, and if you really liked it, you can support me on Patreon in the description. Building circuits takes a lot of practice, and sometimes it can be difficult to know where to go to learn more. But one place that has always helped me out is Brilliant, the sponsor of this video. Brilliant is where you learn by doing, with thousands of interactive lessons in math, data analysis, programming, and AI. It's a platform based on understanding things from the ground up. You learn things way faster than you would watching videos because there are hands-on activities in every lesson. By solving actual problems and not just memorizing things, you won't just build knowledge, you'll become a better thinker. Learning a little bit every day is a great way to grow, both personally and professionally. Brilliant helps you do this with lessons that are available whenever you have time. One of my favorite courses is How Technology Works, which takes you inside the tech you use every day. You'll play with things like computer memory, GPS systems, and more. To try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash mapbatwings or click the link in the description. You'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription.